Hey, what's up, dudes? My name is Perez, and welcome to my voice. Uh, no, today we're doing a uh, motion tracking tutorial. Not necessarily for beginners, but you can follow along and you'll learn a thing or two. So I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter asking questions. Why is my cinematic like this? Why is my tracking like that? So there are a few points that I'm going to knock out straight off the rip. You want to make sure you use the default <laughs> FOV when you're doing cinematics in Call of Duty. Default... FOV for old CODs is 65 and for newer CODs it is 85 and the reason you want to do that is when you increase your FOV you create this sort of warp effect obviously and that will make it so your tracking is warped you will have an oval target or warped text or your XYZ won't be correct you also want to make sure that your cinematic is slow and smooth as you can get um, s slow doesn't really matter too much, but I find personally when I make a cinematic and slow it down quite a bit that it does come out a lot better. And obviously you need a smooth camera path, you don't want shit shaking everywhere and it just won't track that well. Um, also you want to make sure you have good colors and contrast, like my scene here. It's got a good amount of contrast, some shadows, some colors, and it looks good. You can see the amount of tracking points I have is really nice. So we'll jump straight into it, so we'll go 3D camera tracker. Obviously my scene is already tracked, but you right click your clip and you go track and stabilize, track camera, and it will track for a bit. It might take 10 years, it might be really quick, depends on how fucking decent your computer is. So when that's done, you'll click on your 3D camera tracker and you'll get these points up here. And we will uh, choose a point here. There's a couple of different ways to do this. We can click on a little point here, this little follow, and we can right click and go create solid and camera. Or we can select a bunch of points like so and right click and do the same thing again or we can do what I usually do that's pretty quick and easy is you just find your target you want it'll choose like three or four points and you just right click and create a solid but for this one I'm a I'm gonna select a bunch of them because this is actually a pretty nice uh, cinematic here right click create solid and camera some people use a null which is also fine but I like using a solid because that way I can actually tell the orientation that it's going to be in. So once we've got that, we will create text. And if you don't have these controls here, these little guys down here, you just press F4 and it'll change. So yours might look like this. Just chuck it at F4, done. And then you want to make this layer 3D. We'll check on some text. We'll just make it my name. Oh, yeah, that's definitely my name. <laughs> uh, there we go. Something like that. We'll just leave the text like that. Should be right. And we'll press P on our track solid and P on our text and we will control C, control V, the position over and now it's down here. And then we can sort of just reposition it a bit, make it go up a bit higher, make the text a bit bigger. So if you're just wanting to do something basic, you know, some something little uh, there we go. Something like that, something basic, you see how that's nicely tracked, it's staying still. It moves on the XYZ as it's supposed to, back, forwards, up and down. Alright, so that's good. You're pretty much done. Bada bing, bada boom, if you want to just do shit like that. So now we'll move on to the 3D part. We'll go new, solid, element, bang. We will search element in our effects, drag that onto our solid. Bada bing, bada boom. And we'll go custom layers custom text and mask and we will click on my name and then for the texture maps we will click on our cinematic boom and then we'll go into the scene setup we'll go extrude we'll extrude our text and it's got these little fragments fucked up here so I'm actually going to change the font real quick we will just go um, angel wish yeah angel wish pretty nice Alright, back into element, scene setup, extrude, and there we go, that looks a bit better. We go presets, we drag on one of my random presets I have, there we go, nice little reflective text, we'll go environment, and click on this little fella here, we'll go custom layer, and for some reason my element's bugged and it just shows up as black, but it's meant to be the environment of the cinematic that we just, uh, that we just tracked so you can also come down here and go to path resolution and change this to extreme if you want it to be super sharp on the edges and stuff 
Um, on some fonts it looks worse, or on some logos it looks worse, so do whatever looks best. I uh, usually find Extreme works pretty well. So we'll go OK, and there we are, text just popped up. We'll hide our 2D text, and boom, pretty, pretty much done. It, it kind of just put itself in the perfect spot. Um, but if it's not in the perfect spot, you open group one, which is the group our text is in, and we'll go particle replicator. We'll go to my text here, we'll copy the position. Uh, I think I need to do it like this, it's whatever. Just copy it in any way you want to. Boom, 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 and it'll be where my text was. Um, so we'll just uh, reposition this like a little bit, try to get a little bit better, there we go. Something like that, something like this, and there we go, you've got your 3D text. Now if you want to extrude your text more, which my text does need to be a little bit more of a thick boy, um, we'll go like this, we'll click on our material down here, and we will extrude. Yeah, it's nice and thick like that. There we go. And to make it a little bit bigger, we can go particle look and change the particle size. Look at that, bang, bada bing, bada boom. Nice and big. There we go. And it's still perfectly tracked because my cinematic is just literally the most basic thing you could do. So you could say, yeah, I'm done. I'm pretty much done. Good. Um, so if that's what you wanted to learn, cool. Now I'll be moving on to extra shit to make this look a little bit better, a little bit of animation. It's not gonna look super great, it's tutorial, so you know how it is. Um, so, I know lots of people use multi-object. <coughs> um, so you come down to your particle look tab, multi-object, and enable that. And it'll basically just break up all your letters into the characters. So if we go rotation random, um, yep, yeah, right here, this one, rotation random, you'll see that it does this, so boop, 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 which is what most people use, it's pretty pretty standard stuff these days. So if we make a keyframe here with rotation random, and let's say displace, and we'll just press U on our layer to open the keyframes, we'll go backwards a little bit, and then we'll increase the rotation random, and the uh, displace. If you want to displace the XYZ specifically, they just blow it here, just down here. So you can just go, nee, 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 nee. all right. And that'll basically just have the text come together. It's, there's nothing too special. People, people will already know this. But there's a couple things that I do that I don't really see many other people do. I don't really do it too much anymore because I'm trying to get a lot more creative with my um, montage intros, if you will. So I'm going to add some rocks into this. And lots of people uh, get confused by the groups and element. They usually add a whole other layer of element, which, yeah, depending on what you want to do, yeah. But we just want to add some some rocks, some shatter, some fucking spice, you know what I'm saying? So we're back in our scene setup, and we'll click on this folder button. And we'll just drag that below, and we'll change this to folder two. And then we can go to our starter pack, which everyone should have. Um, we'll go ball fracture. You can also use floor fracture, depending on how, how you want it to look, and we'll just drag on the same material. You can drag on a different material if you like, but I'm just gonna use the same material. Press OK, and a little ball will uh, jump in there. We'll open the particle replicator on group one, and on group two, which is where our ball is, and we'll just copy the, uh, the position values here so it's in the same spot. Boom, all right. And we'll increase the particle look just a little bit, just like that. Then we'll go to the multi-object, enable multi-object, and because the ball is already fractured, we can then use the multi-object to break it apart. So if we go to displace, and we displace the X, there we go, look at that, it's fracturing apart. We'll do the Z as well, and we'll do the Y. And then we can bring this up a little bit higher, like this. Now there's pillars here, so I don't want to go over the pillars, so we will just expand, expand, so we don't go too in front of the pillars here. And we'll displace a bit further on the ZZ. And there we go, we've got some, uh, a little bit of an animation going on here. Now, I'm going to keyframe the random rotation on these rocks and bring it down to the end of our little cinematic here and make them spin a bunch more. 
I'm also going to bring it up a little bit higher. There we go. Oh, the rocks are spinning. And, you know, it looks alright. Obviously, you don't want to have a rock going into your camera because, like, this just does not look good. And there you go. That's a pretty basic effect going on there. You can also do the same thing with um, a built-in particle effect in After Effects. So if we make another solid, go particles. And we will go um, CC particle world. It's this one right here under simulation. We'll drag that on there. And it looks a little bit intimidating when you first get into it, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to go into grids and guides. I'm going to get rid of the horizon, uh, the axis box, sorry, and the grid. Just so it's a bit easier to look at, a bit easier to see everything. We'll go into a producer and we'll increase the Z radius by quite a bit. And the Y axis, I'm going to make that lower and the X axis, I'm going to spread it out a bit. And then we can change the position like this of the emitter basically. So I'm going to bring it down quite a bit and then increase the Z axis more. Because I'm going to have the particles going up. We'll go into physics and we will just change gravity here, minus 0 0.010. And that'll basically be like, I call it like moon gravity, just like low gravity. You can also change here the, the way it explodes out, but explosive is fine. So we'll go particle, faded sphere, and we'll change these to white. White, and then we'll change the birth size to like 100, and then the death size to, we'll just leave that default. And then it should just have particles rising up. Does look a little bit funny, it added with the rocks, but you know. Um, so we can actually bring this up like just a little bit, bring it up like to like here. So there'll be zero particles at the start of your comp because it'll start to increase with your birth rate and longevity here. And there we go. We just turn that basic cinematic into something a little bit nicer. And you can also, don't be afraid to just track random shit like shockwaves, explosives, whatever. Don't be afraid to track that shit. Um, this is pretty much it. I don't know what else to add. You can, you can definitely play, like, it just, editing, you gotta experiment a lot. You gotta, you gotta play with a lot of things, right? So, there is deform as well. Uh, we wanna use deform on group one. If we go particle look, we go deform, we can select one of these bad boys here. If it wants to work, maybe we'll go bend, enable bend. Uh, bend angle, we can do something like this, or something like that. Something like this looks pretty good. There we go. A boring cinematic made slightly less boring. <laughs> there we go. And that's how I do my rocks and things. So, sometimes I would also add, like, uh... Yeah, just PNGs to the background or like explosions and such. Just to the background. You just track it in, change the blending mode, mess around with the heaps. But that's pretty much it. There ain't much to it these days. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I plan on doing a lot more. So it'd be nice to hear some suggestions down in the comments. Just to help me out with what to do because I have no idea what to do. I know I want to make tutorials, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what you want. So if you made it to this point in the video, I appreciate you and I will see you guys in the next one.